You know, a million dollar starter home is now the norm in 237 American cities. That's crazy. <laughs> Did you ever think we'd have no, a No, when like I saw that? that, I'm like, what an article. I, I even put right here, crazy. <laughs> you know, you because, know. you know, when you're growing up and you remember, I mean, I'm sure you remember, you're looking at a home yeah. and it looks like a million dollars. You can tell that's a million dollars. Like, I want to live there. That's like, man, this is what I dream about. Tr- tr- trimmed hedges, a driveway that goes like, around. Exactly. A the a white fountain. house, like <laughs> ginormous. And now you look at a million houses, you're like, come on now. <laughs> For reals, is that what this is what we're coming to? So yeah. it was really hard, but a very good article. I mean, just to hear this information, it was just crazy, crazy, right? <laughs> Hundreds of cities across the United States now have starter home price at $1 million or more. So I'm laughing at you because the other day I'm like, in this, we live in this, around this neighborhood, right? Yeah. So we're in this like 900 to, you know, million dollar area. And I'm like, the other day I'm like out in the front yard, like throwing my couch onto the yard, onto this, <laughs> onto the, the curb for pickup. <laughs> and I stepped back. I was like, this is so, this is, this is such a dichotomy. Like yeah. this real expensive house and there's a couch on the uh, yeah. sidewalk for the <laughs> trash company to pick up the next day. <laughs> yeah. Even the trash people are like, well. That's not, this doesn't look like that. No, you know what I mean? It's the, crazy. I didn't tell you the punchline yet. Yeah. I woke up the following morning. It was gone. They didn't even come. Pick, someone grabbed it. <laughs> so someone came and took it. I don't, they probably sold it, but um, they came and took it before the offer the, up. Before the bulk item pickup people arrived. So again, in front of a million dollar house, right? Yeah, that's crazy. So that's there were crazy. only 84 of these types of cities five years ago. Five years. So it's gone two and a half X in five years, which has never been done, nah. I don't think. And for going from 84, that seems like a lot still, too. Yeah. But our top 100 metros, I can see the argument. New yeah. York, Miami, you know, San Francisco, yeah. L.A., Seattle. I get that. Um, but 237 of those, yeah. man, that's a lot. Yeah. And that's kind of, it, you know what it is, though? It's that epicenter thing. Because I guess I already said it. Like, it's the top 100 metros. But now they have, like, the surrounding areas. So, um, yeah, I think in order, it was, like, New York. New York metro area had 48 cities that qualify. Wow, that's crazy. San Francisco had 44 cities that meet that. But LA, California, we had the most. Cal- yeah, California as a state had the most. Yeah. Look, at the, look, LA, 35 cities. Yeah. It says, Andy, it says roughly half of the 237 cities are in California alone. Follow on the list by New York, New Jersey, Florida, and Massachusetts. So crazy, dude. That's a lot. And th- this this kind of does paint the picture of like, if you take a snapshot in time of where real estate is and, you know, midway yeah. through 2024, like, here's where we are. I mean, I, I rely on core, core logic a lot. I know I talk about data, a, data, more, data, more, data more frequently than you guys would care, but th- th- this is exactly what we see, and this is why you see equities at all time highs. And this is this is the new problem for people, yeah. the barrier for entry for people trying to get in. So yeah. even though that is the case, we still have a demand problem. We still have like a demand at, problem. You know, in some areas, we we heard like um, Florida and well, certain cities in Florida have gone up thirty to forty percent more inventory right now. Texas was another one that experienced 40% more homes available, which is crazy. It's kind of like they're going back to pre-pandemic levels. Yeah. Which is a healthy, uh, you know, healthy market. But if you were to guess, like, do you think those places are going to have like a five or 10% slump or do you think in price, or do you think they're just going to kind of equalize and keep and maintain their, their market value? Yeah. I think they're still going to maintain their, their, their value. So I, uh, I'm inclined to believe that when the Fed cuts rates in September, that's going to be the 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 the, the flag that says, "Okay, everyone, rush!" And yeah. you know, people are going to come back off the sidelines mm-hmm. and try to qualify again, which then keeps the demand going, which keeps the prices going. So that's kind of like my long explanation. I think prices are going to stick. Um, you yeah. know, you have other people surveyed here in this article too that are saying like they they expect prices to stay the same. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And yeah. they, they they think they're going to even maybe go up. They definitely don't see prices going down, but they're actually saying they might even march up a little bit as this continues, especially if rates go down. Again, I mean, we're we talked previously about the vanguards and all that. Everything's done purposely. Go okay, go there. You what, know, you, you, everything's just done purposely. We're not building enough. We don't have enough inventory for the amount of population that require a home. Yeah, you know, it's, those are facts. I, I want to take uh, and, and maybe this this is kind of a, a personal aside, um, but you know, many years ago we ran a homeless outreach here in San Diego, yeah. and every quarter we did an outreach downtown, and um, I happened to notice something. There's no money in homeless outreaches. There just isn't. And so, you know, it, <laughs> I, I say it like half jokingly and yeah. definitely don't mean that callously. But 
you know, there's there's a lot of uh, resources allocated to solving the homeless problem, yet it gets more difficult. Yeah. And there's more people and on the streets. A lot and, more. And uh, in some ways, it seems like there's more help, but it feels like there's less. And then you have the actual housing and shelter problem where you would probably notice, too, a lot more motorhomes. Yeah. And oh, yeah. trailers parked on the side, people sleeping in their cars, yeah. like little tent cities popping up around town where people yeah. can go and, and all that. And so like the idea that there's like no money in homelessness is true as a saying, but at the same time, there's a lot of money gets directed towards solving that problem, Absolutely. which seems to be going unsolved. Yeah. yeah. And 100%. Um, you know, again, maybe Vanguard and BlackRock have funds allocated towards that. I don't know that they do. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like they do. Uh, I would like them to build more inventory. How about they, you know what they should do? They should give low interest loans. I really hate this idea too. I'm going to say it anyways. They should give low interest loans to builders. Yeah, of course. If, if the banks won't incentivize do it. Incentivize them. If the banks won't do it and the municipalities won't do it, then if they have the cash, they should probably incentivize them yeah, to go build some places. Them. Yeah. I really, I feel both ways about that. Because now yeah. we're just, we're ingratiating them even more by giving them interest on a loan, but to build homes and okay, maybe there's something there. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Is that's this a what, terrible idea? Someone you tell know, me. Yeah. <laughs> the, Californians, idea. we have the whole ADU and we're actually being incentivized for us to build more on our land, right? Know, and is, so, that, is that a bad idea? I just thought, yeah. of, I didn't write that down. I just thought of it. Like, is that a bad idea? Yeah. No, no, I think let's do it. That's a good idea. Yeah. Um, you know, this may or may not be of importance to people, but a lot of foreign buyers uh, who are wary about putting money in the U.S. Uh, real estate yeah. market, like I get that too. Uh, you know, we don't actually deal with too many people like that. Every once in a while, we have people yeah. that live in Mexico because we're close to the we're border. So close and, to it, yeah. You know, they're buying this side, buying that side, or they live there and buy here. So I think that's a, a lesser, a, a lesser. Uh, frequented topic for us. I also do under. I also do understand why people might think twice before doing that. Of course. <clears throat> yeah. 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 Okay. Well, I mean, any final notes on this one? No. 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 I just. <laughs> I, I like it. Two hundred and thirty-seven. That's crazy. Cities that have a million dollar barrier for interest. But it makes sense, right? Because when you're talking to friends that are in different states and all that, like they're experiencing the same thing. You're like, oh, dude. Does a million dollar home look like? <laughs> but you know what? Like I know locally. Okay, so look locally, I know that in some places, like that's just the case because those places have come yeah. up to that. Uh, I think there's the California effect too, where people who have left California and taken their money exactly. are buying the place at that market value plus plus a little bit uh. over what the value is and driving those up. I've seen that personally firsthand oh, yeah. with some friends in Idaho, some in in in, in Texas, uh, Nevada, Arizona. Yeah. And there was one, there was another one, there was another one, um, oh, yeah. in Florida. Yeah. I mean, it helps, right? Like I got a client that, um, their appraisal, they're in a purchase in Arizona for 875000 The value came in at eight hundred, but because they sold their home here and they're going to net 700000 they're okay <sighs> with just paying that. This is like for their forever home. Wait, wait, the appraisal was seventy five grand Less. below yeah. the yeah, yeah. price? Correct. Oh my gosh. And they're still like, hey, we're still going to move forward. It's okay. We'll pay the difference. <laughs> Well, so this wait, wait. So they have seven hundred thousand because of their sale here in California. Correct. They're going to where are they going to Arizona? Arizona, yeah. Wow. Relocating. I mean, that, you're you're Dang. saying that. So that's another sales comparable in that era. That's just going to help that community. That's crazy. Yeah. Exactly. Well, yeah. Because in that that's at that place at eight seventy five because someone's willing to pay it even though the appraisal is eight hundred. That's it. But now that becomes the comp for the next deal. That's it. Wow. Well, yep. and, the, and here, that's here we how go. you there's, start seeing the millions. Right? Okay. So there's that California effect. Like yeah. It, it's exactly. Extra money. I got a little bit more scratch. That to, makes perfect sense. To of burn. course. Oh my 